What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome to our sixth example video following our course on proof writing. Now today's example video is going to be examples of basic counting principles. So let's go ahead and get into this first example. So the first example says, suppose you have three shirts and two pants in your closet. Assuming that you feel comfortable with wearing any shirt and any pair of pants, how many different choices of shirt slash pants combinations do you have? So I'm gonna go ahead and represent this with boxes. So we have three shirt choices, so we'll f represent that with a blue box here. And then we have two pants choices, so we'll represent that with a, an orange box here. So our total number of choices with three shirts and two pants is going to be three, which is our number of shirt choices, times two, which is our number of pants choices, to make a total of six different possible outfit choices. To kind of illustrate that there are six choices, let's go ahead and make a tree diagram so that we can see all the possible choices while our number of choices is still manageable. So we have two different cho uh, pants choices. Let's call one pants A and the second one pants B. So we have a set A, B to choose from for our pants. So that will split here into two different branches, where the top branch is where you chose pants A, and the bottom one is where you chose pants B. From here, you have the choice of three different shirts for each of these different pants choices, giving us a total of six choices. Okay, great. So now that we have a basic understanding of how these counting type problems are going to go, let's go ahead and get into the next problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this second example. So this problem says, we want to design a 30-minute workout. For the first 15 minutes, we will choose an aerobic exercise from running, rowing, biking, or circuit training. So let's go ahead and underline that in blue. So that'll be our first option for our first 15 minutes. We'll have running, rowing, biking, or circuit training for a total of four exercises. So that'll be our first 15 minute block, which we'll represent by this blue box here, which gives us four choices. So for our second 15 minutes, we're gonna work on strength or balance training. So we have choices of weight training, TRX, BOSU, resistance bands, and our core routine. And that gives us a total of five options for our second 15 minute block. So we're gonna represent that by this orange box here. That gives us a total number of different workouts of four times five or 20 different workouts. So let's go ahead and get into our next example. So for our third example, we wanna know how many two letter words, which we have in quotes because these don't actually have to be words, start with either A or B. In this case, when we say word, we mean any string of letters with length two. It doesn't actually have to be a word. So for this problem, we're gonna be using the addition principle where we're gonna add the total number of two letter words that start with A and the total number of two letter words that start with B. So for our first case, which we'll underline in blue for A, our first letter of our word will be the letter A, but the second letter will be anything from one in 26 different options. So this will give us 26. So we'll have a total of 26 different options for two letter words that start with A. And we can use the exact same logic for two letter words that start with B. So for words that start with B, our first letter will be the letter B, and we will have 26 different options for the second letter to form a two letter word starting with B, which gives us a total of 26 options for two letter words that start with B. And using the addition principle, we can add both of these up to get the total number of words that start with A and B, which in this case will give us 52. Great, so let's go ahead and get into our fourth problem. Okay, for this problem we have a bunch of books on a bookshelf and we're talking about how we can arrange them. So we have 12 math books, three philosophy books, and five art history books that are arranged on a shelf. We want to know how many arrangements are possible if all books of the same subject are grouped together. So let's go ahead and draw our shelf here. Okay, great. There's our bookshelf. From here, the way to find how many arrangements are possible if all books of the same subject are grouped together is going to be determined by the following formula. So the number of arrangements that are possible if all books of the same subject are grouped together is going to be the number of ways to sort each of the subjects on the shelf times the number of ways to sort each of the subjects individually. Let's go ahead and figure out the number of ways we can sort subjects on the shelf. So we can see we can pick any of the three subjects for this first slot. So that gives us three different choices. Then for the second spot, we can pick any of from the remaining two. And for the last slot, we'll only have one. So this gives us six ways to sort the subjects on the shelf. So for this first part, we will have six. So next, let's calculate the number of ways that we can arrange the math books. So here I have drawn out 12 squares to represent each of the 12 spots the math books could go in while they are grouped together by subject. So for the first position, we'll have 12 choices. Any of the 12 math books will do. And we can see we will have 12 factorial different ways to arrange the math books. Next, let's look at our philosophy books. So we have three philosophy books. 
which means similar to the math books, we will have three factorial different ways to arrange these philosophy books. And lastly, we'll have our art history books. And for those, we will have five factorial different ways to arrange our art history books. Great. So the final number for the ways to arrange books on this bookshelves will be three factorial, which is the number of ways to arrange the subjects, times 12 factorial, which is the number of ways to arrange math books, times three factorial, which is the number of ways to arrange the philosophy books, lastly times five factorial, which is the number of ways to arrange the art history books, which will give us about 2.06 times 10 to the 12th power different ways to arrange these books on the bookshelf. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our next problem. Okay, for this problem, we're going to be dealing seven cards off of a 52 card deck, and we're gonna line them up in a row. And we wanna know how many possible lineups are there in which no card is a club. So in order to do this problem, we're gonna be using the K permutation formula, which is defined as follows. A K permutation of an N element set is a list of K elements from the set without repetition. So the number of K permutations is defined as follows. We're gonna call that P of N comma K. And that's going to be the descending product of n times n minus 1 all the way down to n minus k plus 1. So in this case, our n is going to be the total number of cards that are not clubs. And we know that there are 13 cards of each suit in a deck. So we're going to subtract 13 from 52 to get 39 possible cards. So we'll have p of 39. And then k will be the number of cards we're dealing off, which in this case is 7. So our k permutation will be defined as follows. We'll have 39 times 38 times 37, all the way down to 31, which will give us a total of 76,899,763,100,160 possible lineups where no card is a club. Great, so let's go ahead and get into our last. So for our final problem, we want to compute how many five-digit numbers can be made from the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 if there, are no, if there is no repetition and the even digits must appear in an unbroken sequence. So we're going to do this by breaking up the five-digit numbers into cases where there is one even number, two even numbers, three even numbers, and four even numbers. So let's start with a case where there's one even number. So for all these different cases, I will be representing the odd numbers by blue squares and the even numbers by green squares. So let's go ahead and draw out four squares for our four odd possibilities, and then our one even square for this five-digit number. So for our first odd number, since we have no repetition, so for our first odd number, we can pick any of the odd numbers available between 1 and 8. So we'll have four different choices. For our second odd number, since we don't have repetition, we'll only have three choices, and then two choices, and one choice, and so on. And for our only even number, we will have all four choices of even numbers available to us. Next, we want to multiply this by the number of starting positions we have for our even number to account for our unbroken condition in the problem statement. So in this case, the even number can go anywhere, so we'll multiply this by 5, which will give us a total of 480 for this case where there is only one even number. Great. So let's go ahead and get into the case where there's two even numbers. Okay, great. So to start off the case with two even numbers, let's go ahead and determine the number of possible positions for these even numbers to be in. So we have one case where they're at the end here. We have one case where they're moved over one spot one case where they're in these two spots, and our last case where they're in these two spots. They can't be spread out because we have a condition where they have to be unbroken. So these are the only four possibilities. So we'll go ahead and write that up here in front. We have four different possible positions for our even numbers to be in. Next, let's go ahead and determine the odds for each of these digit slots. So for the first odd number, we'll have one in four, then one in three, and one in two. And then for our even numbers, we'll have 1 in 4 and 1 in 3 odds. So let's go ahead and calculate how many numbers we could have of this form. So if you multiply this out, you should get 1,152 different possible five-digit numbers of this form. Great. So let's go ahead and move on to when we have three even numbers. Great. So let's begin, just like the last one, in determining how many different positions we can have for these group for these three grouped even numbers. We can see that now that they take up a majority of our five digit number, we only have three positions. They could be on the far right, the far left, or in the middle with odd numbers on either side. So that gives us three different starting positions for our even numbers, which we'll multiply here out front. Next for our odd numbers, the first digit will have one and four, and the second digit will have one and three. And likewise for the even numbers, we'll have four, three, and two. Let's go ahead and calculate the total number of 
five digit numbers of this form. So we'll have three times four times three times four times three times two. That'll give us a total of 864 numbers of this form. Great. So let's move on to our last case, which is when we have four even numbers. Great. So when we have four even numbers, there's only two positions for these even numbers to be in. We could have them on the far right or on the far left. So that gives us two possible starting positions out here out front. And then for our odd number, we'll have four different choices. And then for our first even number, we'll have four, three, two, and one. Great. So let's go ahead and calculate the total number of five digit numbers of this form. So we'll have two times four times four times three times two, which will give us a total of 192. And using the addition principle, if we add up the numbers for all of these cases, we'll have the total number of five digit numbers of this type. So that'll give us 2,688 different five digit numbers with these conditions. So that finishes our last problem off and that's a good place to stop.